Hi everyone and welcome to the Business Takeaway Series, a video cast where we interview professionals in the advertising, marketing, and public relations industry. I'm your host today, Stephen Jin. With me today, I have Kaza Sharif, who is a professor currently teaching at the George Washington University. He is also a retired executive and a country manager from Procter and Gamble. Welcome, Professor. Thank you, Steve. It's great to have you today. Uh, I would love to start the interview by asking you, what got you interested in the marketing industry? You know, I, uh, uh, I'm not gonna say that I was interested in marketing right from the beginning, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, after I had finished my MBA, I got introduced to uh, 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 the marketing department at University of Cincinnati, and uh, uh, which is where I got my MBA from. And one of my professors introduced me to the Procter & Gamble company as I was applying for jobs. And they interviewed me and I, have, I was open to different functions at the time, but they uh, interviewed me for the marketing research function originally and offered me a job. And so I just entered the company in that function and from market research switched over to marketing. And then my career just went from there. Okay, that sounds lovely. Uh, as you mentioned, you did your MBA uh, degree in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, is that the highest degree you have got? And what what have college actually helped you prepare degree uh, um, this pro uh, this career? Sorry. Yeah. So I uh, got my bachelor's, my uh, bachelor's of science degree in business administration or management uh, from a university in Turkey. Um, I'm originally from Pakistan, so I went to college in Turkey. And from there, I started to apply to various business schools in the US. And I got admitted to the University of Cincinnati and my uh, uh, MBA was actually focused on quantitative analysis. But I took some marketing courses and quantitative analysis. And as I mentioned to you, uh, uh, it just so happened because of my quantitative analysis background, Procter & Gamble hired me in their market research department. But then within the market research department, I developed more of an interest in marketing because that's where a lot of the uh, business uh, brand management decisions were being made. And mm -hmm. I requested a transfer and, and moved to uh, marketing. And originally I worked on various diaper brands and uh, uh, Carmenial brands and so on, and then broadened into other categories. But really, uh, you know, uh, education and a master's degree gives you a very broad sort of uh, knowledge and, and training in a number of fields, and then you can apply it in whatever direction that you want to. You know. Perfect. Thank you for the answer. Uh, I understand you you started your career with Procter and Gamble at a relatively young age, uh, just right after your MBA program. Um, what has been your career since you joined Procter Gamble? And has your, um, what is your biggest takeaway from this career? You know, um, I spent my first 10 years at the Procter & Gamble headquarters in Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, I started in market research. A couple of years later, I moved into marketing and uh, learn basically uh, the ups and downs and the complexities of running a business from a marketing point of view, but really the brand management people are responsible for the um, entirety of you know, all aspects of uh, running a brand. Mm -hmm. So uh, then after another few years of working there, I, I originally from Pakistan, I mentioned to you, I had an interest in international business. So I let the company know that if there's a possibility, I would uh, like to uh, move into an international subsidiary, at least for a few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were thinking of, they were planning to uh, start their business in Pakistan. And they asked me if I would be willing to go. I think um, you are familiar with some of my background that way. Right. And so I said, okay, good. And I went and so the international business became very interesting to me because um, I started, literally, there was no company on the ground, started from zero and established the company. But then I was responsible for not marketing, 
not just marketing, but all aspects of the business. So, mm-hmm. you know, hiring, developing the organization, training, financial aspects, dealing with the government and so on. So really that sort of a broad exposure was very interesting to me. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Well, um, you certainly took, um, you certainly had a very long time with Harvard Gango and you've seen plenty with the experience. But um, as you know, the world is changing, this technology uh, growing and as we've experienced COVID, work environment has totally changed. What current issues and trends in this industry um, would you recommend people to know about or be aware of in the marketing industry as it changed? Yeah, you know, um, technology is evolving rapidly and every month, every year, new things are coming up and uh, uh, and that's impacting all fields of business. Right. You know, for example, uh, marketing. I mean, when I was working in traditional marketing, um, a lot of it was reaching consumers with your messages through uh, television, print, radio, and so on. And now there are so many different ways of reaching consumers. In fact, um, TV and, and, and print are restricted to some specific kinds of products, but generally most of the marketing work is being done by reaching people through various kinds of internet-based uh, uh, approaches. Mm-hmm. And uh, also uh, big data analytics, you know, in, in terms of targeting consumers, who is most likely to become a user of your product, who is your brand most likely to appeal to. And it's not even marketing is not just for brands. Marketing can be for causes, for purposes, um, campaigns and so on. So I think, I think a lot of these newly evolving uh, technologies and its impact on how business gets done. Data analytics, targeted uh, you know, marketing um, and uh, web-based marketing. Mm-hmm. For anybody who's interested in, in marketing, beyond that, um, the field of finance is evolving very rapidly. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of these decentralized kind of financial tools are, are coming up. And uh, even though you know, people get excited quickly um, blockchain technology and so on. Uh, today, it's hard to see how exactly it impacts things, but it's quite clear that it will have a big impact. Things will change. And I think people, uh, I, I would urge any uh, new young people entering the market through a business education to be very much on top of the emerging technologies and, and see how it impacts the conduct of business. That's what I would recommend that everybody has to be very, very attuned to the technological evolution and not just for technology's sake, but how it is impacting the conduct of business. Thank you for your advice. Uh, This is very uh, related to the next question. As you mentioned, uh, the technology is changing. People need to learn how to code, how to have data analysis uh, skills and so on. So what do you believe is the most important soft and hard skill in the marketing industry? And why, why is that? Yeah, you know, um, hard skills, I think you mentioned, I mean, I think one has to uh, have a broad education across all the elements of business, whether it's marketing, finance, people management, um, you know, all, all of those sales, Uh, All of those things one has to have enough exposure to so that you can work across the various functions. Uh, The soft skills that you mentioned, you know, they are often uh, not as clearly taught or understood as is necessary. I mean, when you enter an organization, uh, ultimately, no matter what kind of business, what kind of organization you enter, your work will get done through uh, collaboration across groups of people with other people. And so those skills of how to interact with people, uh, how to um, how to handle when you have disagreements, um, how to convince other people about your point of view, how to listen better, um, how to uh, um, develop young leaders and how to coach them and guide them and so on. These skills are have always been and will remain very important. 
Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I saw and learned at Procter & Gamble when they looked at um, all the people who worked there, uh, what was the difference between people who reached only mid-level and people who reached very senior levels? And what they found was that the big difference was not in intelligence. Anybody who enters a large good company and gets up to the mid-levels is usually very intelligent. They have good IQ. But the big difference between the very senior managers and others was that the more senior people, the more successful people also has had a high level of emotional intelligence. You know, emotional intelligence essentially, in a very nutshell, it means being able to uh, understand how other people are reacting to the way you are communicating and how other people are feeling about uh, how you are interacting with them. Um, and having a sense of, you know, what other people, um, how they respond to things and how you respond to their um, comments or their approaches to you, you know, so I'm just describing in a very rough way, emotional intelligence, but it really has to do with those types of things. And that's very, very important as a soft skill. Yeah, uh, but uh, just to elaborate that, do you have any example or personal experience where you find the most important skill when you um, do an international business? Mm -hmm. You know, my personal experiences were, um, I was a country manager, as you know, uh, in a newly established business. And what I had to do originally when the organization was small, business was small, I had to wear many, many hats. Um, so I had to be able to work with my marketing team and my finance team and my HR team and my sales team. And uh, sometimes or very often, I had to mediate disagreements that would take place between these different uh, uh, groups of or different functions within the company. Right. Um, and you can only do that if you have a good, reasonably good understanding of each function and what they're about and what their priorities are. You know, the finance department looks at everything just from a financial perspective. A supply chain people are looking at issues in execution of the supply chain. Marketing people want to make sure that they're going to be advertising or they're going to be building demand for the product. <clears throat> Excuse me, and they want the product to be available, you know, when, when the demand is created. So, you know, it's a balancing act between all of those. And I think being able to cut across all of those different functions um, is important. In addition to that, and you, when you're working with in emerging markets, you have a lot of unexpected things that come up. Right. Uh, government regulations, all of a sudden, you know, uh, some um, civic disturbance issues where you cannot operate properly. So you have to be able to be on your toes and very quickly make an assessment of what's going on and then quickly change course if necessary. So I think that uh, that is um, the other thing that I would suggest. Yeah, so just to conclude, you would um, say that being very flexible and yes. at the same time being very cautious how you um, combine all this perspective into the business is a very important skill to have. Yes, I would say flexible and agile, okay? Agile. Uh, be willing okay. to change your plans as circumstances change and very quickly figure out, okay, now that this is the new circumstance, how should I operate? Uh, how should I change my plans in order to still succeed? Perfect, thank you for that. And mm -hmm. for the next question, it's more about uh, sharing your own career. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to ask, which part of your career you enjoy the most, whether it's with your early career or with Procter & Gamble, and what is your biggest takeaway so far from our career in the marketing industry? You know, the, uh, as you know, I mean, I've worked just at one company for 30 years, right. uh, starting with entry level. And so the first 10 years working with Procter & Gamble, I was learning a lot, a lot of the foundations. Uh, and then I grew and was running one brand in a large market US. Okay, uh, but the part that was most enjoyable, but also it was the most challenging, was my work in uh, both Pakistan and Ukraine. These were startup markets where I had to go in and almost operate, act as if I'm running my own little company, mm -hmm. but really being the representative of a very large company. 
um, and uh, think through all aspects of it, you know, the hiring and training and development of organizations, setting up of distributors, training advertising agencies, so they could help us with our uh, ad advertising development, um, dealing with the media, um, dealing with uh, public relations to make sure that the company's reputation was well protected. So all of those things I did both in Pakistan as well as in Ukraine, uh, which of course is a lot in the news these days. But um, you know those uh, startup businesses were very, very interesting. Uh, that's not to say that they always were enjoyable because there were many, many times that there were very tough circumstances. But at the end of it, you know, when you accomplish something, you really got a sense of, of success right? that you have done it and you could see your own personal role in what was accomplished. Thank you. So um, as you said, it's more enjoyable for, um, for you to start something uh, that helped Problem and Gamble in a different country. And that's very uh, enjoyable for you to create such a big um, impact on all of the countries. And that's lovely to hear you from. And well, you know, when you work in the head office like Cincinnati for Procter & Gamble, it's a very large organization and you are a very small piece of a very large organization. You learn a lot, but uh, you can also be lost in this big sea of, of, of people. But when you are heading up a small business, such as I did in these countries, um, you know, you, your uh, uh, work and your efforts have a very direct impact and you can see it. When you do it right, you can see it. When you do something wrong, you can also see the results right away. Thank you. And lastly, um, it's just a very personal question from me. As I understand, a lot of young uh, young graduates are starting off uh, with their own uh, own businesses rather than join you know renowned companies such as Procter Gamble as yourself. But would you say? Is worth it to start your career at a bigger renowned company or to start something new like you did in a new country but just uh, under Procter Gamble? Yeah. You know, there's not a standard answer to that, okay? I right. would say uh, a large company is a very good place to get trained and learn a lot, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, we are seeing so many examples of people who immediately they had some idea, they either had a technological uh, you know, knowledge of something or they had an idea to, to create something new and they went into business on their own right from the beginning. You know? mm -hmm. So there is not a right or wrong way. Uh, the only thing that I would say is that you know, sometimes people start their own business uh, with the wrong objectives in mind. People think that this is a way for me to become very rich quickly. Um, and uh, it, it's not about getting rich that you start with. I mean, if you if you have an idea that some, if you uh, have an approach or an idea that's going to improve people's lives, that's right. going to bring a product or service to people that is really, really improve their lives, then your being wealthy is just going to be a side effect of that or an outcome right. of that. You know, so I think to think that let me do something that's going to make me rich, you probably are not going to succeed. But if you think that you have an idea which is going to be, which was going to bring something new to the world, to the consumers, then by all means, go for it. However, when someone has an opportunity to join an established organization um, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, learn and get trained. I think that's not a bad thing. I mean, working for a few years, uh, you can you learn and understand a lot of the systems uh, that a large organization uses to manage their business. Uh, and there's a lot to be learned from there. I mean, I know many people who worked in these large consulting firms or other large companies for a couple of years, and then they started their own business, which is also fine, but there's not one path, honestly. I mean, there are many different ways to succeed. Thank you. And lastly, um, is there anything you would like personally to add for people to encourage them to go after a career in marketing? 
You know, uh, I think marketing is one of the core functions in business. And no matter uh, what kind of business you work in, you're always applying marketing skills. Uh, the international business uh, class that you were taking, it's not very narrowly defined marketing, but it's broadly uh, international business operating in multiple countries and so on. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, getting that kind of broad education, not just this one course I'm not talking about, but generally, right. and then going out there and applying it in whatever kind of business, uh, which is of interest to you. I, I, I think that's a great way to move forward and launch your career. Thank you. Thank you, Azar. Well, uh, that will conclude our interview. And I would love to thank you for your time. It was a real pleasure talking to you. And once again, I'm Stephen Jing, who's your host today with Professor Kazi Sharif on Business Takeaway. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe on our YouTube channel to have our up-to-date videos and feel free to watch about anything else. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Yep, thank you for having me. It's Thank you. a pleasure talking to you, Steve.